Good evening, folks. 30 seconds to showtime. Grab your seat, leave your drinks to the bar. Hold your breath, put your hands together. We present Sandra Bay's finest star. Who has danced with the Mariner Guinea? Who has dined with the Queen of Vermont? We trace the voyages of Sinbad. Corresponded with the men who will come to us to the beach. Sinbad, man, the show is going to have a And hello, everybody. Welcome once again. Uh, well, yeah, well, it is once again because I've done this show before. It's the G Spot. My name is Jeff with the G. G Spot. Clever, eh? Uh, you're uh, welcome to our brand new home right here on, on the Carney Show Network, uh, which is uh, which is mine. Uh, and then uh, new date and time for this show. Normally it used to be on the weekends, but as the life is coming back to normal, people are wanting to do shit on the weekends. So I want to let people do shit, including entertainers, so they can work. So we're going into the week. Uh, so today, new date and time. And but I have an amazing, amazing guest. Um, she is a, a fellow host of shows, uh, not unlike this one, where she talks with lots of fun people. She's also an amazing, amazing, amazing artist and all around great person. Uh, all the way from Planet Lizdom, got Liz de Savoy. How are you doing, Liz? Hi, Jeff. I'm great. How are you doing? One moment. I am an idiot for something. Give me a second. It's one of those things that... There we go. Now I can hear you. Oh, perfect. Hello again. How there are you, go. Jeff? Hey. Yes, <laughs> Hello, everybody out there in internet land. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. When I moved over to the new network, I had to read you everything technologically speaking. And so there's always going to be some glitches and hangups. But that's also the glory of live entertainment is sometimes there's glitches and, you know, stuff like that. So, uh, yeah. So uh, how, how are you doing? I'm really good. I'm really good. I just came off of my own show, hopped off that train, hopped onto this train. So, you know, I'm feeling pretty, pretty excited about that. It is the Wild West of live streaming. So I'm really excited and honored to be here because it is such a great challenge. Just do one thing and then do the next. Oh, I agree. Um, it's uh, it's it's a lot of fun, and it's like what's weird about Twitch because we kind of talked about it a little bit. Twitch is such as weird, like um, it's like and it's like gamers because a lot of people are playing video games on here and people watching people play video games, and then it's like weird shows like this. So it's like it's like uh, community TV, uh, like public access television meets like video gamers, and so it gets kind of weird. And so I don't know. I like it, but I also like video games, and so. And there's a lot of weird drag shows on Twitch, too. Are there now? I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I've seen some stuff on here. Uh, there's, a, I believe, Lady Counterpunt is up from your way. And she has I a love channel her. Here. She has a channel on Twitch, uh, which I watch, oh, and it's crazy. I she love didn't it. tell me that. Yeah, I know it's it's on. Yeah, it's like a it's like a little ASMR sort of weird channel, and uh, I put it on every once in a while, and I really enjoy watching it. Uh, oh, I also, weird. yeah, because like it's like it's weird because of the pandemic. I start you know get to knowing all this sort of stuff, and then uh, because of our mutual friend uh, Pickles Levey, I like really got turned on to a lot of the people up that way because they're friends with all these people up there. And so I started watching a lot of stuff and then I saw there was the closing of the local, the beaver was at the local, the local bar that where a lot of the gays were. And so they had a big, like, like online benefit on Twitch, which was like, like, like going out in style party. And so that's how I found out about like Lady Counterpunt and all these other stuff. And I went, this is amazing. And then I started talking to some of my drag friends here in Austin and they're, I go, yeah, there's all these, like, Toronto's got this huge, like, weird drag scene and this weird, like, clown drag scene. And they're going, really? I go, yeah. And like, and then I went, and there's there's these amazing people like Lady, uh, like, you know, Pickles Levey and, you know, yeah, Imogen and, uh, you know, Lady Countryfunt and, like, two or three others. I went, like, these. And they're going, like, basically, I said, Lady Countryfunt. They all, this one drag queen I know, she goes, that is the most amazing name ever. <laughs> so I go, Toronto. Toronto. <laughs> Well, fun fact for you, Jeff. Yeah. I used to work with Lady Contrapunt and Brooklyn Heights. Uh, okay. You know, um, so I know them both very, very well, and they are excellent people and amazing performers. Pickles is wonderful as well. I know Pickles from the Something Strange shows. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know uh, 
Oh my gosh, Alice in Chains, very lovely as oh, well. Something I you want to check. Alice in Chains as well, yeah. No, it's uh, I, I, I love any sort of weirdo inter, uh, fringe entertainment like that. So I was on board. Me too. So uh, this is just an informal chat. So we're gonna chat back and forth. Is the idea? So anybody tuning in, this is what's going in. So I have no cards or questions. It's all just about based on the conversation. But uh, but I do want to get a plug taken care of for you out of the way. Well, not out of the way, but I, I want to talk about this because it's really amazing that you wrote, uh, you're the artist for a book. Yes, I, uh, I am one of three artists that actually put together a book. It's written by Andrew Robertson. The background and colors are done by Dennis Freitas, and I had the good fortune and the honor to do the illustrations for, and then the fart happened. This is the first of a series um, from a uh, a group called the Mythimals that we're doing. They're mythical right. mythical beasts. This is Bart. He's a Una bunny. We have Pega Foxes. We have um, oh my gosh, I'm forgetting all my characters. We actually have been working on this for five years, if you can believe it. Um, something like this does take a long time. We have um a Una puppy, we have a Una dragon, a Una kitty, an octopussy, um, and all kinds of different characters. And we talk about different um different trials and tribulations that children go through. So this is, you know, this is for kids young and old. And we've actually, um, we've actually included a coloring book section in the back. I'm not gonna show you everything because we don't wanna give away the milk for free, but this is Bart the well, Bunny. Yeah, I know. This is Bart. <laughs> that's, uh, that's not amazing. Uh, definitely uh, for people that end up, for people who watch this, whether live or later, sounds like a great book for uh, kids and kids at heart. Uh, no, it, it looks. No, it looks really good. Uh, I like. I like. I, I saw the stuff uh, online about it, and I was going, "Wow, that's really awesome!" And then when when uh, you said, "Hey, I'm going to try to cool. Let's talk." I, I'm I'm happy to talk farts. I I talk about all sorts of weird stuff. So thank um, you so much. We talk about farts all the time. They happen. Poop happens. Also, farts. I was going. Yeah, or yeah, farts and yeah, I, was, I was talking art, but fart works. Art, oh. fart. <laughs> Fine. Art, art, poop, you know, the usual. Sometimes I've, I've been to some shows uh, where it's really hard to distinguish that line. Uh, some weird, I've, I've, I've seen some weird ass performance art pieces where it's just. Oh, yeah. I mean, I do a zine called Crap Nation. Let's be honest here. You know, it's it's one of those things where it just constantly revolves around, you know, expelling. Oh, <laughs> uh, the. Ah, uh, zines that take me back in like my age, like really bad. I was going, oh, oh yeah, yeah, zines. I remember those things that existed. Oh yeah. Well, you know what? I am the first to admit that I was born in 1976, May 19th. I will have the good fortune to turn 45 years old, and I do remember when zines were a huge thing in the 80s and the 90s. You know, I had a zine yeah. called Fat Lenny with my sister back in high school. Um, for those of you who love Ween, you'll understand why that's hilarious. Um, yeah, so we, I love you guys. Yeah, I love we, yeah. Seriously, God, Ween Satan is still one of the best albums ever. In fact, um, Dickie from The Electric Dead that I just interviewed is part of a Ween cover band, which I think is the coolest shit ever. He has like God, Ween Satan on his arm, and I'm like, you're amazing. I that's love it. So cool. No, that's amazing. No, it's, um, I'm going to be turning 47 this year, so it's one of those. Yeah, I, I totally get it. So it's, uh, yeah, no, God We yeah, God We Saint was an amazing record. And I used to work in a college record store back in, like, in college. So it's, like, like during the 90s, that early 90s, early mid-90s age, where there was just, like, so much alternative, like, really good music then. And, uh, like, I was living in Dallas at the time, and Dallas blew up musically. So it was, yeah. like, I was at the forefront of all that stuff happening. So, like, the Toadies, Tripping Daisy, uh, and whatnot with that area. So a lot of fun. Uh, no, you know, and I, what I really miss about that time period is that if you wanted to hear obscure music, you had to go out to the record store, flip through the bins to find it, or talk to someone who worked in the record store who knew the different distributors to connect you with those things. Like if you wanted to hear the swans, you had to work to get to hear the swans, you know? Kind of. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, I had the, I had the good fortune of working in a college music store and working for a label briefly so i got i got on board to all this sort of stuff so but i also know but like, like literally i went to college and i like i just tripped and fell into a job for like some you know music store that was opening up um and then 
they just went, all right, cool. Here's all the stuff. And here's listening station. And like all the reps came in and started talking. And then I talked to another rep and they were like, well, wow, you're really, you're really into talking about this sort of stuff. I think we were talking about Nick Cave. And oh. so I love, I love Nick Cave. Uh, like one of my favorite artists of all time. And so oh, yeah. like, I really, I was like deep dive cutting and this was like 90, this is like, what was this? This was like, uh, like just right when murder ballads dropped. Um, uh, the 90s murder ballads. It was right when that dropped. Uh, so it's one of those, and like I deep dove into all that stuff and I started talking about like, oh yeah, like that. And I love like talking about the birthday party and then talk a little about, boy, about boys next door. And they go, wow, you really know all this stuff. I go, yeah. And if you really like that, sort of sound here's a really cool local band that has that really it isn't they, their cover but it sounds you know it's you know that just has, definitely has that sound and then they go wow you you really into this stuff but yeah i go hey why don't you uh why don't you do a and r for us for a bit so nice oh my god I did. good for you i did they didn't listen to me with any of the bands i said they should sign uh shortly after all that started then creed dropped and then everybody wanted every band to sound like creed and yeah well okay but think about it this way it's better that that happened than everybody wanting everyone to sound like nick cave because nick cave is nick cave and should not be touched no actually i agree that's what i said i go it was very much of that mood not that sound like basically all right cool you like that kind of dark bluesy sound this is a really cool band that's that vibe or like going all right cool like like you know that, that weird pop punk we're starting to get in the front of here's some really good pop punk bands out of here here's this sort oh, of stuff. these are the things to listen to uh, like, like actually, the music I have playing that opened this uh, this uh, this uh, show was from a band called the Dooms UK, which were out of where I was, and that's like I have a CD of their music from then that I'm using cool. now uh, for their stuff, and they're like I would I would equate them closer to like Faith No More in their in their kind of vibe as far as just oh. like just like scatter shot all over the place music that just somehow comes together, and awesome. so. But anyway, I digress. We're not here. I mean, we can talk about that, but we're here more to talk about you. So what, uh, so we're talking a little bit about music. What are you like? What I know, I mean, you know, I know you talk for the electric dead, so I'm, I'm assuming you're into them, but what other stuff is really getting you? What, what, what are you really getting into lately for music? Cause I'm always looking for new music. Well, it's interesting that we're talking about, you know, having worked in a record store. I worked um, at a record store in Toronto called HMV. Um, it doesn't exist anymore. But um, I worked at it at a time where you did have to be a huge fan of music because everything wasn't readily available on the internet. So you did have to have a broad sweeping knowledge of music because let's face it, in that industry, there's a, there's a lot of gatekeeping. Um, I interned at Much Music um, at the beginning of 2000. Mm -hmm. A lot of gatekeeping again, where, you know, if you're into music, all of a sudden everybody's testing you. They want to know what you're into, you know, what are your influences? What can you, you know, what sort of connections can you make? And the truth of the matter is, if you are passionate about music and especially underground music, gatekeep away, my friend, because I just want to learn. If I don't know, I don't know. So teach me. Yeah. Um, I've actually been in a huge hip hop flavor lately, of all things. Um, I just watched a film the other day by Guy Ritchie called The Gentleman. And all of a sudden, you know, I see a Wu-Tang on the screen. And I'm like, oh, my God. I like listen to all this hip hop. And all of a sudden, you know, I'm feeling this far side flavor. And I'm just like, OK, you know what? I'm in an old school hip hop kind of mood today. And um, with the zine that we do, Crap Nation, we have a playlist on Spotify called Crap Moods. And my picks this week were all old school hip hop, you know? And all of a sudden, you know, um, Jen Twa, who does all the art, she's throwing in some old hip school hip hop flavor. I'm seeing Snoop Dogg pop in. I'm like, we didn't even talk about this. I'm like, what is going on? You know, that's kind of my thing right now. Um, but it's interesting my moods do change you know i love nick cave i uh you know i had the good fortune to sit second row at one of his conversations um performances or i don't know if you remember that from oh that last tour back. he did like two, that last tour he did like two years ago yeah um he was at the convocation hall at the university of toronto and the seats were not assigned you had to line up early and it was first comes first serve. So uh, my sister and I lined up, I think three or four hours in advance. I've never had to pee more badly in my life, but I was hell bent on being front row. And I ended up getting second row middle. And um, I kept putting my hand up to ask questions and he just never got to me. His handlers just could never, you know, kind of bring me in. Even though here I am front row and center, green hair, hand up. I look like I know what I'm talking about. 
And, you know, I never got a chance to ask him what his musical influences were for when he needed soul soothing, because when I need, you know, soul soothing and I'm searching for answers in my life, I will sing Nick Cave songs. Who does he sing when he needs that? Because I'm pretty sure he doesn't sing his own music. You know, at some point, your own art becomes a little bit boring and contrived. So I always wanted to ask him that. Hopefully one day I will have the good fortune to sit with him or, you know, in an in a environment like this and ask him that question as well. He's phenomenal. Every time I see him perform, I ball my eyes out like a baby. Even at that, I You're cried sure. when he brought up to the piano, you know. Um, uh, yeah. Um, so uh, I saw that tour here. Like, I just moved to Austin like just moved to Austin and like I went to go see the show and I raised my hand and I got called. Did you really? Yes. What did you ask him? All right. So what, okay, this is, this gets kind of deep and you know, kind of a little bit talk. So, uh, so Nick came, like, it's the go-to, like you're, you're just like, it's, 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 it's like, it's like everybody says, you know, the soundtrack of your life is usually dominated by a particular artist. And I, I really think that Nick cave is mine, like goods and bads. And so, so uh like when uh every like big tragic moment like like when 9-11 hit all i did was listen to is and no more shall we part the record uh because i ooh, that's heavy but it fits so well that entire record could be a soundtrack to that sort of that moment and then um uh, yeah yeah so uh darker with the day one of my favorite songs of all time. um so what i asked was because like his because uh, because his son had passed away like a year or two earlier, yeah. and uh, so I, I, I uh, what I what I said was uh, because of my own experiences I went all right so I, I basically I just, like, I just want to thank you because a lot of times when it comes to the idea of male grief, I, I, uh, we as men are really only allowed to publicly grieve for you know like a couple of weeks until we're supposed to shut it down and i went you know when my wife died i made a point to talk about it and so i think it's really great that you were still encapsulating all this grief uh and showcasing it with because he like ghosting just dropped when i right like the week before he, he came through and That's so right. and like literally, literally like, it was like friday it dropped i saw him like wednesday and so it was like just that's all I did was listen to go see. I went, and I just basically I didn't even ask really ask a question. I just said I just want to thank you for being able to to create more great music that has gotten me through so many times. And he he said some stuff. He goes, well, you also have to, you know basically he deflected himself. You know who else really needs it to the mothers too? And I go, you know, I totally did that. And you know he's trying to just you know, shut it up. And then he sat down and played, uh which was unprompted, he sat down and played the song that I would sing to my late wife, which was Into My Arms. Mm. I cried so hard. <laughs> so, right now. That's beautiful. <laughs> so it's like, like uh, so like that, that whole experience uh, was like really great. And th what I'm going to even go back even farther for the sort of stuff is that, uh, before I moved to Houston, Nick Cave played here in Austin. And so when I drove down from the Dallas Fort Worth area, which is about three hours away to Austin, uh, three hours, uh, Nick Cave and the Bad Seas, the full band was playing here. And so literally, as I was driving to move, stopped in Austin, and then moved and then went to, to Houston. So it was like this whole became this weird full circle thing for me with Nick Cave about my life with my my deceased wife was just this whole weird circle of me in Houston was began and ended with Nick Cave. I was also the last tour that Blixa was on too. Oh yeah, you're right. That was like 2001. Yeah, you're right. Oh my gosh, I did get you know I got a chance to see that tour as well. It was really really good. Yeah. And then, uh, that's pretty good. Yeah, and then like two years ago, I got free tickets to go see PJ Harvey, and Mick Harvey was in her band. <laughs> and so it's this weird kind of. I watch it go. That kind of looks like Mick Harvey. And they go, and there's Mick Harvey, and then there's John. What, what's his name? The, the guy she did the record with that had, was also named. They go, yeah, he hasn't been with her in years. What the fuck's going on? <laughs> Another amazing concert was a PJ Harvey. So uh, it was when she released her last record. But anyway. So yeah, Nick That's Cave, amazing. of course. We're, yeah, uh, but yeah, 
So, uh, so you've been really getting into back to to segue back to not Nick Cave. Although I will talk for hours about Nick Cave. Um, uh, I could talk about this entire. I could spend this entire show talking about Nick Cave. Oh, that oh. you know, it take more than one show. Uh, well, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, how much time you got? You know? I don't know where I have to. I, like, I, 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 I have I have loved Nick Cave since I saw him at Lollapalooza back in ninety three. That was uh, that was Lollapalooza well, too, yeah, the second year. Yeah, I that was so. like. I remember. Uh, it was I, 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 oh my god! Like seriously, Jeff, I'll never forget. It was like you know, you know, in the cartoons where that 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 wafting hand comes along and like beckons you. Yeah. Literally, it's like my ears just went, "What is that?" And I remember just like seeing this speck of a man, and just standing there entranced as a kid. I'm just like, I love everything about this right now, and nothing else existed at all and and nothing sounded like that than anything else on that tour oh my god yeah no, and it, it was, but the, 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 yeah the only thing that sucked the fact is he was early on in the bill so you know 90 you know it's it daylight and it's just yeah. uh, that that's music not for daylight <laughs> not for daylight but good if you are not stoned high or drunk yet i, I guess so you can actually enjoy the con the, the music that's true because i'm trying to remember, oh, who was, i can't even remember who was the headliner that year uh Alice and Jeans? Yeah. No, I don't think he was headliner. Was it Primus? Was it Primus, the actual highlight headliner, or I don't remember. That it doesn't matter. Oh, I don't remember. I, I, I went to the. I, I did the. Uh, I I did not get a chance chance to see that year. I did catch the like I was in high school when the year one happened, and we all skipped school to go see it. Uh, yeah. That was a lot of fun. That's the first time I saw the Jim Rose Circus and a lot of the weirdos there. Uh, Besides, you know, you know, of course, but at the time, I didn't know that this is what I'd be doing. I just went, "That's some crazy shit," and then, yeah. "Oh, hey, my fun! Oh, 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 cool! The butthole surfers are playing now. I'm gonna go watch the butthole surfers." <laughs> <laughs> so <it's... laughs> I miss bands with names like that. You know, butthole surfers. Uh, I remember I Texas saw band. Tool for the first time at Lollapalooza, and I saw some men um, juggling chainsaws while they were going off and you know i'm just watching this going my life is amazing i love this you know I think tool was that year of nick cave so if i, remember I think so i know some of it does muddle together but i do i do remember you know those were years of a lot of firsts musically and um culturally subculturally you know that oh, that yeah. was my introduction to to sideshow as well you know i had never really heard of you know a human blockhead before then i had no idea I didn't know sword swallowing was a thing. I knew of the, well, not Blockhead, but I knew of sword swallowing just because I've seen movies with it. But, you know, it's a movie. Who, you know, who knows if that's real or not? Uh, but yeah, that's like a like real life because I grew up in small town Texas. And so, which probably not too just somewhere to small town Canada uh, really? in that respect, as far as very insulated, insular sort of communities when it comes to anything weird. Well, yeah, you don't have cable, you don't have internet, you know, nope. you know you, your friends are kind of whoever is around you. Yep. You know, the, the fact that we can be such weirdos and make it out of our towns and thrive and grow as we have is a miracle in itself. Well, yeah, uh, yeah, like I, I lived for magazines, uh, any sort of like, those real, like, like any sort of music magazines, I would like devour anything, like mostly metal, because at the time it was metal, so I'm devouring okay. weird metal stuff, because that's what was available. Uh, but yeah, the weird I, sort of I that, ordered like, the Alternative Press, Cleopatra Project, Propaganda. All, all great stuff. Like I did not yep. discover a lot of that until uh, college. Because once again, small town Texas, uh, so it's more macho. So metal's going to be more prevalent. So we had okay. metal bands in the in the area. So that's what was more prevalent. I'm I'm cool. I, I enjoy my I enjoy my metal, but I like getting into the weird, obscure shit. And uh, uh, so I really enjoyed like I I just read it all, and I go, oh, that seems cool. And I just learned about who these people musicians were, and then. You know the one radio station that would like you know, like one that would play some music sometimes. I was kind of you know crazy from the yeah. Dallas Fort Worth area, so that's how I discovered some music. And I went, oh, that's cool. Went and bought the cassette tape. Yes, cassette tape. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because CDs weren't really a thing yet. 
and records were gone uh, pretty much by then. Yeah. Uh, so really, did, you have, did you have them in those tall plastic uh, cases where you kind of flipped it and you had to unlock it? Yep, yep, I sure did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. In fact, uh, even when I worked in the record store, uh, music store, we you know, we still had a wall of cassettes because I mean, this is the '90s, so people still had. I mean, technically speaking, I have a cassette player in my van. I just use it to plug in my my ipad on my iphone <laughs> just so i can play in the thing because it's not i don't my van's old enough where it doesn't have bluetooth so i have to i have a little cassette adapter to play everything else through my stuff which is fine i don't care do you remember taking your pen and putting your cassette tape on and swearing it to rewind it <laughs> i remember i remember recording off the radio to make yes. sure the music i wanted record pause or wait record play pause and you just undo the pause to get a really good blip, yep. and then pause it again just to get and it was like it was a victory if you could cut out the commercial and just get the song you're like yeah, yeah. I got all uh, that's uh yeah or making sure you didn't get too much of the radio host talking over the song like you know the beginning or, or, or the end the kids these days will never know the terror you would feel as you're watching the tape you know, go down as you're hearing a song you've never heard before and you're playing record and you're like, please don't run out of tape. Please don't run out of tape. I love this song. Please don't run out of tape. You know, and all of a sudden the song finishes, you're like, oh, okay, I can pause now. All right, because you know it's a weird enough song that you don't know when it's going to play again on the radio. Right? So, or you're not well, going to be home for it. Well, that's it. You know, in Toronto, we have, um, we had a radio show called Brave New Waves that would play um, on CBC radio from midnight till four in the morning, um, I think like five nights a week, like Monday to Friday. And of course, you know, I'm in school, I don't sleep, you know, I'm drinking or probably possibly doing drugs. And I would hear a lot of new bands that I love and I would always have some tape cassettes ready to record. And I would just devour the music and I would try to record the, the name of the band afterwards as well and make notes because I just was so hungry for for underground music and that's where i learned a lot about a lot of different um bands that i still enjoy to this day you well, know yeah same here uh there's actually like really enough is like anything i was in it's like well i don't listen to a lot of like the, the old school like 80s metal stuff much anymore but the bands i like then i still like today and yeah. the few bands I made friends with that are still making music or, well, now one doesn't make music anymore uh, just because, you know, people die. Uh, but, but I, I mean, I, I, did I ever talk, do you know my Pantera story? No, I want to hear your Pantera story. Okay. Just, uh, so, so. Let's uh, talk about That's fine. No, it's fine. Let's talk about it. So when I was in high school, and uh, so this was probably 89, I think, uh, if I remember correctly. Uh, like, as far as the date, I mean, so um, I was in, uh, like, uh, where I lived at was about an hour away from a major town. Major town. Uh, Fort, like, I lived just outside of Fort Worth, Texas, near Dallas, all that sort of stuff. I know you're Canada, you don't know where any of this stuff is, but that's okay. Well, For those I, people, I have a map. I grew up with National Geographic. I have an idea. Okay, that's fine. It's, I mean, they're, you know, big, larger, much larger towns than the small, tiny town of, that I lived in. And so they used to have a thing called Joe's Garage, which would do like, you know, like band, they have bands playing. And so they would do a thing called Eight Bands for Eight Bucks. You go in, you get to see eight bands for eight dollars. Okay. Like that exists anymore. Um, and we're underage, but it's an all ages bar, a play. You can go yeah, all ages there, so it's fine. We went and like you know, we had our little like garage band, thinking we're all so punk and and, and metally and you know whatever. Yeah. Um, and so we go in and like about four bands in, a little band from a small town called Pantigo, Texas, was playing that they just got a brand new singer, Pantera. Uh, we really dug it because they sounded different than everybody else uh, as far as their stuff, although it sounded similar. And we really dug it. And then we found out that uh, the guitarist and the drummer, the brothers, used to work at this pizza inn at this place down the way. And so we decided to stalk them, essentially. <laughs> we showed up and they happened to be working that day. And so I was talking to, like, I met Daryl. That's how I met Daryl. Um, oh, wow. And so this is before they got big. They they released like their one record with their previous singer. They were in the middle of making Cowboys. 
Uh, but you know, they're they're making the record in the like, early on. They didn't know what's going to happen yet. So there was, I think he was, I think, I think within a month he was gone from that place just because you know they're getting serious in the Cowboys. And so but we had a great when we I probably we probably talked to him for I don't know like a couple of hours and he'd sneak his pitchers of beer and stuff because you know pizza joint that had pitchers of beer and so he's all right cool hey like chatting with this and so we had a great time chatting. Fast forward four years ago ish, uh, uh, Pantera blows up. It's huge, uh, so mm-hmm. much so that they actually they actually founded a strip club in North Dallas called the Lodge. And there, they were doing a record release party for their live album. By this point, I'm in college. I'm working in the, the record store. I just started being like a rep with the label and stuff like that. So uh, through the record store, I got we got passes to go to the record release party. And uh, like you know, my boss at the time and stuff like that were chatting. He goes, yeah, da, da, da. and I, I told my Pantera story. He goes, yeah, you like that? The hell goes, all right, yeah, cool, whatever. Like you, that ha- like that 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 happened, sort of thing. And I go, well, okay, cool. I mean, I go, Chains already probably won't remember me. I'm going to say, hey, because. So we the show up. The was this big. <laughs> yeah. Well, I show up and I see Daryl and I go, hey, Daryl. And I, you know, like this, I don't really remember, but this, he goes, yeah, I totally remember. And he like had details as far as the conversation that we had had. He remembered that. And like, 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 little stuff, like we're talking, we were talking about some weird, obscure band stuff because yeah, I'm the nerd that would like read all the, it was like, as the nerd kid, re- devouring this information. Mm-hmm. about weird obscure bands like medicine wheel and ferrari and stuff like that and so we started talking about this sort of stuff and so we're talking we're chatting from it just having a nice conversation and uh my boss he goes yeah goes you know, like uh Darryl goes yeah yeah cool we're gonna have like do some stuff back in the vip you want to come back and i go and he, like as it says that my boss walks up uh and my boss was kind of dickish at the time uh i go he goes, and he goes, yeah, yeah, like, you know, like Daryl, like, 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 oh, so I guess you do know him. I go, well, yeah, we're talking. And basically, Daryl gave me the, Are, is this guy cool look? Because you, <laughs> you, know, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I guess, is this guy cool? And I did the, no. And basically, <laughs> just like, so this, and so Daryl goes, hey, J- hey, Jeff, you want to come back to VIP with me? And my boss goes, well, uh, I go, all right, cool, man, I'll see you later. <laughs> just put my like, <laughs> VIP with Pantera, a very good time. Um, well played, like well played. That. Yeah. Uh, and so, like, when Daryl died, I actually made a, an oath to myself because I, I was such a big fan. And Daryl's favorite drink was Jaeger. Like, he, like, that black tooth grin. So, but anytime I go to a metal bar and they're playing Pantera, I do a Jaeger shot. Oh, that's a really good reason to do a Jaeger shot. That's the only time I'll do it. <laughs> oh, I know. I, I um I have many stories with Jaeger having worked in many bars in my life. That seems to be the go-to. I don't know why, but every time people want to do shots, so they want to do a shot, I'm like, yes, I do. Because it, it always ends up being Jaeger because I don't know why, but it's just at some point when you've bar, been drinking, yeah. you know, when you've been drinking all night, Jaeger seems to calm your stomach a little bit and you can just keep drinking more. But then unfortunately it just makes you a lot more drunk. So it kind of just compounds on itself. So it never ends well. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> I haven't had the bad. Ex- I, I just know it's. I just it's just that weird. T- the taste is fine. If I'm going to taste something licorice, I'd rather just drink absinthe versus Jaeger. But that's just me. <laughs> you know, I, I had a twelve Jaeger birthday um, when I turned twenty six. It was pretty gross. <laughs> yeah, that does yeah. not no. No, I'm amazed I made it past 26. That was just really not cool at all. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's hard to see. Yeah, it was dirty, 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 dirty. Well, I had a, I had two wisdom teeth coming in at the same time and I just, mm-hmm. uh, I, I couldn't deal with the pain. So I was just like, you know, doing whatever I could to have a very happy birthday. <laughs> and then two days later, it was a very unhappy birthday because I was at the emergency dentist with the dentist like pinning me down while the, well, the nurse was pinning me down while the dentist was yanking my teeth out with sedation, of course, but I just was not having it. So oh, I ended up no, with like no. a, I had, I had chipmunk cheek for like a week and a half, two weeks. And I went to see a DJ. I'm like, oh, I'm fine. And they're letting me in. They're like, they, they find my Tylenol 3 in my bag. And she looks at me and the, the security guard looks at me. She's like, oh, oh, yeah, no, you're fine. Go in. 
I didn't realize that my face was still swollen until I saw photos later. And I was like, the entire night, I'm like, I'm so cool. I'm having fun. And then the photos get developed. I'm like, my face is so huge. <laughs> I'm cool. It's fine. Everything's okay. <laughs> it's oh, yeah. Well, it's just, you know, it, it's, it's, it's the pursuit of the party. You know, when you want to go see someone perform, you'll do whatever it takes to do it. And if you believe that you look awesome, you look awesome. Even if you don't. <laughs> oh, I can totally understand that. Uh, I get it. Uh, I've done many similar things. Uh, oh, yeah. I was just gonna I was just gonna say you know it's amazing that for all the partying we did pre-cell phone you know um all of it is the stuff of legends and highly romanticized but we're also alive like I remember I used to leave parties at three four in the morning in these weird warehouse districts without a cab I was just fine would tell everybody oh yeah I'm going home I'll see you later I'll grab a cab on the main street and somehow I would grab a cab on the main street and get home safely when really I probably should have died you know and yet I, I would leave a message when I got home and my friends would check the, the answering machine when they woke up at five the next day you know because bad news finds you fast also, that's a thing that doesn't exist anymore. Answering machines. Right? Oh my gosh. Yeah, like even even my phone has an answering machine. And I'm just like, why are you calling me? Why can't you send me a text? Well, I was I, I, I just go, well, one day, yeah, if I don't recognize your number, I don't pick up. So that's a good reason oh, yeah. to have an answering machine. Uh, and so if they leave a message, that at least leads me more to believe that you actually want to talk to me. You're not some weird robocaller telling me that my weird super aunt uh, is deceased from uh, Africa and is trying to get me money or whatever. Uh, yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, well, I'm always thinking, I, I always, if you're calling me, that means it's a important versus texting which is more casual right oh I, also, I saw my sister call me the other day and i'm like what's the matter what's the emergency like why are you calling me or even like there's just a sense of urgency with calls so like you're going i have to have this decision now so i'm calling yeah. versus like be going all right cool like in the next couple of days i'll you know tear text no rush it's all good i don't know yeah. i'm I'm trying to think of, I, God, I'm rarely on the phone anymore to talk to anybody. Usually yeah. it's most of my actual live, con, quote unquote, live conversations is this way now. I'll like text back and forth or message back and forth for like a minute. And like, all right, cool. See you online. And then we'll yeah. talk. <laughs> totally. Totally. It's it, the, the form of communication is so different. I actually recently just made friends with um, an artist who is in his 60s. He is what you would consider to be a Luddite. He has a cell phone, but he doesn't want to, or nor does he know how to, to text. He only does phone calls. And he is the only person that I will make the exception to answer the phone for, because he simply will not text. He refuses to learn how to do that. He calls, and when he calls, he expects you to answer. And I kind of had to explain to him, you know, like, my life is busy. You know, I can't always answer the phone, but for some reason, when I try to call you back, I can't get through to you. So it's kind of a crapshoot. So don't take it personally. Fair. You know, and sometimes he doesn't, and sometimes he does, yeah. and there's nothing I can do about it because that is just how it is now. You know, I, I can't just pick up the phone and randomly answer it all the time. Yeah, uh, there's a few sideshow people that are still really old school in that way. Um, they do have an online presence, so that helps to an extent, but it's mm -hmm. one of those trying to do this sort of stuff. It's a bit tougher, but, uh, I still enjoy talking to them when I can. Um, so, uh, we still got like 20 minutes. We can talk about whatever. Well, okay. So we talked about the book. So everybody go pick that, go find Mythimals, pick that up. Yes. Go to, go to Mythimals on Facebook because the link is there. It's on Blurb, but, um, if you just go to the Mythimals on Facebook, you'll find the link easy peasy. If you can't, just send me a text at, at you know on my messenger at Lisdom. I'll plan at Lisdom. I'll help you. It's no big deal. Now, in fact, uh, I'm gonna pull it up right now and put it on my share on my group so people can know to find oh, it. At thank some point. you. Like, we're just so happy to finally have it published. You know, it's it's been one of those things where 
the pandemic happened and we couldn't do a release party the way we wanted to. We couldn't um, publish it the way we wanted to. So we went to this really, and um, it is available through Amazon soon. Um, we're doing pre-orders with a few shops within Toronto and Hamilton as well. So it's the first of a series. So we'll see how it goes. So far, it's been very well received. I have parents who are sending me photos of their kids coloring in the back, which is exactly what I want to have happen. You know, books are meant to be enjoyed. And if your child wants to color on the pages, color on the pages. Yeah, you know? that's good. Be creative. Put your mark on it. I'm not upset when a child draws on something I've created. I'm honored. Oh, you know, I'm, it's the highest it collaborative. Well, yeah, what, it makes what it collaborative. What, Exactly. Um, there's a story of Mar Maurice Sendak who did um, where, where the Wild Things where the, Grow, I believe. And he has a story are. where the wild things are. Thank you, Beer. Um, and he, he has a story about how he had sent a postcard to this child thanking him for, for loving his art. And the child ate the postcard. And I thought that, you know, and he thought it was the highest compliment ever. The mother was so apologetic. He's like, no, that's the greatest thing ever. I drew something and he ate it. You know, and just being Max, that's what he's like, just being Max. Yeah, uh, it's just being Max. And, no, that's, you know, that's it is great. collaborative. <laughs> no, like, Jeff, uh, if, if your dog ate my drawing or you ate my drawing, I wouldn't be upset. I'd be like, wicked, you know, my art inspired you to eat it. We'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, I'll use vegetable tasting. <laughs> oh, that's true, yeah. I mean, it may not, I mean, yeah, no, that's, if it's interesting enough, maybe. Or I, I also wouldn't mind, I, I like collecting art and stuff like that, too. I have a really good painting from a local musician who does art and does really great music. Uh, so I, the beginning of the pandemic, uh, I was fortunate enough to have a job and then get furloughed, and they were paying me way too much money being furloughed. So I just spread it around and bought friend stuff that's that's how i acquired like uh that's why that's why i got like uh mysterion's book uh which is amazing by the way i pick up mysterion's book uh and then like art and all this sort of stuff and so just because i went all right cool I, I i mean my 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 needs are already met and so i had just like went well what can i do with this well, let me help my friends and pick up their stuff and buy help buy art buy this sort of stuff what's available that it's something more than just like i mean i don't mind donating directly but i also like me as a as a performer and artist i think it's cooler when you want my thing yeah than just to give me money and so i go oh you want my thing here yeah that's awesome you want to buy a shirt cool that's that's far cooler to me than just get, i mean don't you know, I'll, I'll take your money but uh <laughs> it's just i feel like i'm accomplishing something if i give something back absolutely I, i've been doing that a lot too um anytime i've gotten a commission during this past year i've taken half of that money and I've reinvested it back into other artists for the same reason, you know, um, I have the good fortune to make a little extra money being an artist. Well, of course, I'm going to turn around and support my other fellow artists at where I can, you know, it's, it's not always possible because, you know, money comes and it goes, but when I have it, I definitely like to, to support everybody and, you know, make sure that everybody's getting a little bit of love. Yeah. That's the idea. It's just, I mean, you know, we're all like, you, you talked about in your show and like, I agree with it. The fact is, we're all in this together, and yeah. so as one of us does well, we need to make you know one of us does well. It means we all do well, and we help make sure everybody else is doing well as well. Because that's that absolutely just, it's, it's, just, it's a good way to go around. So that's why I like doing it. We all rise together. I mean, it, it is kind of hokey when you say it, but it's true. Like, you know, if we can lift each other up together, everybody wins. You know, there's glory enough for all. And I, I'm always very confused when, you know, someone doesn't want to support another artist or when they're threatened by them. It's like, well, everybody has a different voice and we come to the table differently. Why not support each other? Yeah. You know, as long as, as long as everybody's a good, like, it's one of those things I go, well, I mean, there's caveats. If they're, they're a shitty person in life, then yeah, I'm not going to support, you know. Well, yeah, don't be a jerk. Uh, yeah. But as far as if they're, I mean, if they're cool and groovy, you'd be cool and groovy too. That's the way it works. So, uh, that's, I'm how it's why I, that's why I do this sort of show is to help talk, you know, help, you know, it's making sure those names keep being heard. And so, the, you know, try to get them inspired, help inspire and help be inspired. And so and thank like you for that. that. 
it's a big deal. You know, thank you for doing that. That is a huge deal. I know there's someone out there watching right now who is, you know, excited and inspired to know that other artists are not sitting down and sitting on their hands. You know, that we're, we're doing stuff and things regardless of the bullshit. Well, I just, as I said, any and also, I don't like, like, I spent a, yeah, I, I had the choice. I, I was, I was bored for two weeks and I hated it. So I, yeah. so I started doing stuff. Like I, I saw them perform live in person since the beginning of March of last year. And so, yeah, like I was in New Orleans was the last time I performed for the Great Southern Sideshow Hootenanny uh, this past year. And so it's, that was the last time I performed live. And then like two weeks later, everything shut down and everything's opening up back right now. But it's, well, here in America, like yeah. Texas is like Texas is saying, you know, we don't care. And like, well, Texas just decided to open up without having really enough people vaccinated, and so that's a thing. And then, okay, ugh. I uh, I've got one more shot to do before I'm fully vaccinated, and so uh, I'm I'm not even thinking. Uh, I've got a line in to do a live show once I'm fully vaccinated, but it's one of those things. I go, I'm also going. That'd be really cool. Wait a minute. <laughs> I don't, it's one of the things like, while I know I'm fine, I just want to make sure that they're doing stuff that's good for the the patrons, the uh, the audience, because I don't want to, I don't want to inadvertently do a thing where people get sick. Yeah, no, it, so. I get it. It's, I do sometimes feel like there is a responsibility that you have when you are performing and, you know, uh, broadcasting, you know, at some yeah. point you do have to kind of say, you know, use your head, use your brain, you know, be trained on this before you do it at home. You know, there, there are different steps to A, yeah. B, and C protocols, you know, wisdom, smart, smart, smart. But the truth of the matter is common sense is not common. So that's why those, those um, statements have to exist. You know, don't be a jerk, you know, help your fellow man. Don't try this at home unless you're trained. Like just yeah. things that you think would be in place but not everybody thinks the same way it's very interesting you know like wear a mask wash your hands wear a mask keep so you know if like keep six feet distance as much as you can uh really simple like i i work i work in a costume shop here in austin and we like our whole blocks we're like in a weird artsy area so it's like all these boutique shops stuff like that so they're like as a blanket statement for the the, the where we're at, because like you know Texas technically lifted their mask mandate completely. They allowed pub, uh, private businesses to make their choices, but they're not going to. It says the government isn't trying to keep people masked up. Is basically what they're saying. Yeah. And so, oh yeah, like our entire block just goes. You know what? We're staying masked until uh, until we hit a threat. Like we have to hit that threshold. And like Austin, where I live here. They had a mask mandate in place and they're going, where are mask mandates in place until the mid April? And we're not changing that. Mm-hmm. So if you're doing stuff in Austin, you got to do this and everything. And of which the governor is fighting and has lost one court case so far to try to get people not to have to wear quite any masks because our governor and our mayor hate each other. Ooh. And we're in the all in there. Everybody's in the same town. So that's fun. Ooh. Oh, wow. yeah. Austin's that's just, yeah. Yeah, Austin's a weird town, like, like in general. So, like, the, Austin has two sides of it. So, one side, you've got, like, Willie Nelson and Matthew McConaughey on, hey, keep Austin weird, smoke weed, da, 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 that sort of stuff. And then on the <laughs> other side, you, I mean, no, it's like, cool, let's keep Austin weird, cool, groovy, because that's the that's the, the, the unofficial slogan is keep Austin weird, because there's a lot of weird shit here. Willie Nelson is basically the poster child for that. Okay. Other, other side, we have Alex Jones. You know who that is? No. Okay, so Alex Jones is, uh, he has this website called InfoWars, uh, which basically is like, you know, it's like super right wing and conspiratorial, like crazy. Like, you know, he's the guy who has said, you know, well, the, the you know, climate change is caught making all the frogs gay, that sort of guy. Uh, I mean, it's just crazy sort of stuff. Uh, okay. And so let's, so we got super left, super right. Not really a lot in the middle. <laughs> wow. Okay, that's that, that's very um, polarizing. Oh yeah, so it's a lot of fun. And so, like uh, on the weekends, Alex Jones rides a little Humvee up and down the street in front of my costume shop, and the hip, more hipper. It's an upscale hip. It's still hip. It's a part of town. 
And he's like sitting on top of his Humvee with a speaker saying, they're all lying to you. Everybody's lying to you. Bill Gates, blah, blah, blah. The Corona, you know, yada, yada, yada. It's a thing. Wow. You know, we do, we do have um, a truck that rides around Toronto with um, a ticker saying very much of the same ridiculousness. Mm-hmm same sort of thing it's it's just a different form that's just bizarre to me like it, these zealots are just like they, they come out of the woodwork you know oh yeah and like i mean in texas has a whole new brand of like we're super independent in their their minds anyways for most texans and so it's like i kind of just all it feeds into that sort of stuff even more so so i'm just going ah, just you're the reason why we have this many people dead yeah it's very anyway. frustrating to see that happen because it's like when you're in kindergarten and you, no, nobody can go out for recess because of that one child that just simply will not do the thing yeah just do the thing that's all it's not so hard just do the thing it literally is it's just mask up wash your hands and just yeah get the fucking shot get the vaccine whichever vaccine you have available um Closer yeah. we get to that, uh, they, what they, they did test was like Moder- both the Moderna and the uh, Pfizer shots here in America have proven to be, oh, like when everybody takes those shots, they're over, it's over 90% effective against, against everything. So that's great. That's amazing. Yeah. But everybody has to do it. <laughs> that's the problem. Um, I know. I'm, I'm trying to get my vaccination right now, but um, I'm too young. We Apparently in Ontario, it's still um, an older age demographic you, you haven't hit that stage yet yet so, yeah. not yet I, I have an appointment with my doctor on the phone next week and i'm just gonna kind of put it in there again like i'm ready anytime like you name the place and i will just go there and sleep up let's do it you know well here's uh here's some things to think about uh, as far as what it took me and why i got the first shot quicker is uh take a look at what the qualifications are beyond age because sometimes you can't okay. help age but if they go all right cool if you have a medical condition and they have, unfortunately, this is a bad thing when it says this, but it worked for me because I'm, I'll, I'll exp- I exploited it. I go, well, it's technically true. So a lot of times they put ob- obesity into the, 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 the marker of a medical condition, which means they check uh, obesity by your BMI. Oh. So double check your BMI because, you know, BMI is bullshit, but it's one of those oh, things based that, on how that? they check. Yeah. See? Oh, yeah. Based on that, I'm fat bastard from a. Uh you know austin powers like the bmi I'm not saying that, like, I, I mean, to be fair i'm not it's one of those things i thought i find bmi to be the most bullshit thing ever when it comes to stuff but i'm gonna exploit that thing just to make sure i get a shot and so that's yeah. pretty good uh and now like texas yeah texas officially opened up to anybody over 18 so but i'm going i've already got one shot in i've already got my appointment for the second one so i'm good i get my second shot on the 11th and then uh by the end of the month, I'll be fully officially vaccinated because it takes about two weeks afterwards for your body to process everything. And then, yeah, then I get to take a trip to the Northeast. So it'll be a lot of fun. Hey, that'll be exciting. I'm excited for you. Um, yeah, I in actually New York. Had to, in New York, eh? Um, I just recently had to get a COVID test because, again, I called yeah. in for a migraine at work and the protocol is that uh, you have to go get tested. Once your results come back negative, then you have to wait three days. So long story short, I sat there, they did the thing, and I went, I have now lost my human blockhead cherry. I can start shoving nails at my nose. There you go. Hey. (laughs) It actually wasn't as bad as I expected. Like, I'm sitting there, and I'm like, that's it? Like, it just feels like I got water up my nose. And and the the, the nurse is like, you didn't even flinch. I'm like, well, it didn't suck. Like, I mean, it was uncomfortable, but I thought you were going to, like, tickle my brain and, like, stab my, my head. And, like, it was really nothing. You know, yeah, it's just like, oh, the most efficient test I've ever experienced. It was just, choo, choo, there we go. Okay, well, yeah, she I put was, it in and dug around, but still, it was nothing. Yeah, I've, I've done worse than that on myself, so it's fine. Uh, <laughs> How would you feel? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, lady, I've had... Well, let's be honest here. We've, we've probably all had weirder things shoved into us at some point and somehow like it's, it's nothing like it's no big deal. <laughs> I've been, yeah. I've been to those parties. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Again, <laughs> stuff of legends, highly romanticized. There's no proof. 
That's right, because yeah, they, they, because the only pretty like is and you know, because like, guess what, Polaroids uh, Polaroids don't last forever, so it's really nice about that. Unless you preserve them in such a bright way, it's otherwise. Um, all right, so we only got a couple minutes left of the show. Uh, oh my gosh! So, yeah, I know, right? Like that's what it is. Like literally, I think we could sit and talk for hours upon hours. Uh, I, mean, we'll, I think we'll, I, well, I think we're gonna be ping ponging back and forth, which is a good thing. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, First off, make sure to go to the Mythimals uh, on Facebook. Get the book. It's amazing. Great. Uh, also, make sure you follow. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Uh, right below your uh, right below your picture, I actually have the Instagram handle for yourself, which is at Planet Wisdom. Uh, make sure you follow Parent Wisdom on Instagram, on the Facebooks, on the YouTubes, uh, so that way you can watch the weekly shows. Pick up some crap nation. That's right. There we go. Ooh, and I love that. The, the, the kind of like Hitchcock front. That's amazing. I love oh, yeah. that. Instagram like hates her handle. They just, oh, they don't like her hashtags. <laughs> I, I, wonder uh, why. I don't know why. I don't know. I may have to pick it up. So that's all some great stuff. Uh, I have always had some amazing guests uh, I, with the uh, Planet Wisdom. I've watched every episode. Thank you uh, so much because- for that. Because I, uh, it's one of the things I get. It's it's the easiest support for you people who don't know how to support people. The easiest thing you can do is follow and watch the thing. Because this stuff we do, while it's free for you, it's you know, I mean that what well, how we know you you like this thing is we see that you watch it, we see that you follow well, it, we see that you like up. it. Yeah. Well, I mean, thank you so much for that. Like next week we have Tanya Cheeks from the Canadian Burlesque Hall of Fame who heads uh, Pussy Whipped Wednesdays. She's going to be on next week. She, uh, you know, is from the same uh, same wonderful collection of people. Pickles, Lord Bay, Lady Counterpunch, Alice in Chains, the whole kit and yeah. caboodle. So I encourage you to watch next week because it's going to be pretty exciting. Uh, no, it's going to be a lot of fun. And those are on uh, Thursdays. Thursdays right. at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So it would be, I think, 7 p.m. your time. For my Such time, or where, where you know, wherever you live, watching this thing, figure that shit out. I'm not, I'm not your travel agent for that time zone stuff, but you're you're smart. Follow all the stuff. Talking. Yeah, follow that stuff. Follow her stuff. It, the most of the most of those things will auto correct for your time zone, so you'll be fine. Because like when I see your like event pages, it auto corrects for my time zone. So. Oh, very cool! I didn't know that. Yeah, it does. Okay. So it works really well. So like, cause like, cause I'm local. He goes, all right, cool. Your show's starting like, like literally, like your thing earlier. He goes, your show's like at six o'clock. Is you know, Planet Wisdom starts in an hour. And I go, that's why I went. Oh yeah, here's the link for the show for the thing. <laughs> <laughs> I was still at work, but I had I had a moment where I could step away to send the link. So because you know, the great thing about technology is, you my phone, I can do all the stuff like I can do some stuff like but for that I can take a moment to go all right here's the link uh, oh, it's, it's, I, I just discovered how to um, upload things onto my phone onto StreamYard in a moment I could be like oh I need to add that and I just go to Chrome on my phone and all of a sudden I'm getting my studio ready on the fly yeah, yeah I, uh, I don't have that luxury I, I can I can do a lot of pr- for this show, it's easy. Like, it's really like I, I preset every like I'm, all my sets are, presets are done now. Now officially, it's my first show with the new setup. Uh, that going forward, it's always going to be the same. So I don't have to read it for this show. For the Devil's Hour, which is the, the show I do on Wednesdays, that takes a lot more prep because I have to because you know, it's new content every week. So like I'm finding new bands and new performers and stuff like that. So but I use my phone through YouTube to save their stuff. And then when I get home. I'll upload it so I can watch that sort of stuff later. Cool. But I'm gonna I'm gonna check out see if uh, about I think Electric Dead has some live stuff. So I'm gonna check out that. Maybe I might reach out to them about coming on at some point and other things. Uh, I love stuff from Canada. Like I've got I've deep dove into some really cool stuff from them. Like I saw like like Blood Opera and like the Doghouse Rose. Yeah. Both amazing bands uh, from from Canada, which uh, they are all Crap before. Nation royalty. Crap Nation royalty. No, I love those guys a lot. Right, yeah, Bandcamp, bloodoffer.bandcamp.com. I love Bandcamp. Uh, it gives more money to the musicians, so I always any band I talk about, I always make sure that they're on. Yeah, you know, any sort of like small smaller label like that, because I don't want to. I don't mind. I have an Apple, so I, I listen to a lot of stuff to Apple. But I also buy their. I buy stuff on Band uh, Bandcamp or SoundCloud, and then I stream it through other stuff because streaming 
for these bands. For smaller bands, they're never going to see much money from streaming money, yeah. like from like Spotify, Apple, or whatever. So I buy their records and then I stream it as well because streaming also helps tick those numbers up because you never know. They may hit, yeah. they may hit, they may hit that next level. They start making money doing in Spotify. So it's Let's do see. both. And I got to, I got to plug Night Chill because they're on Bandcamp as well. If you're into George Romero or, you know, um, Dario Argento, they're a really great horror band as well. Um, Taya Munster plays Theremin. Love them as well. Again, Crap Nation Royalty. Nice chill. So I mean, I oh, you would love them. They're so good. Oh my god. I love all like I like. We didn't even do like I because working in you know music, I got appreciation for all sorts of music. So it's one of those. I listen. I listen to everything. Like on on Devil's Hour, there's all sorts of. I, I range anywhere from weird hip hop to things like you know like you know, weird horror rock. Like there's a band here out of Austin called uh, the Immortals. Which is very Ooh. much in that vein too, which is really cool. Immortals with the Z at the end, uh, which oh, is very okay. much in that kind of like horror rock vein, but they're kind of fun and campy at the same time, and they're really good. Uh, so much good stuff. So, uh, so let me get my quick plugs, and we'll get out of here. Uh, so, let's say it's Thursday. So uh, I'm gonna have something's gonna be playing after this, uh, but it's but it's pre-taped. But it's really cool. It's a really cool video. You guys will enjoy it. Uh, Tuesday. Uh, myself and Scabs will be back here for Gaffing the Truth on uh, on Carney's show where uh, we're going to be talking about the Vatican because it's Easter so we got to talk about the Vatican so we're going to talk about the weird shit about the Vatican that's what that's what Gaffing the Truth is about it's about talking about conspiracies it's talking about cryptids talking about the paranormal very cool uh, well Vatican fits all of that uh, <laughs> uh, then uh, on Wednesday and then plus I'll be uh, the late night fix was the movie I'll showcase. I'll be watch, we're going to be watching a movie right after that. And then on Wednesday, uh, Devil's Hour, which we have lots of really cool stuff, uh, including a really cool band by name uh, Black Midi, uh, Chandar Chandar, which is a really great uh, clown uh, clown from uh, New Orleans, and the Vigil of War, which is another amazing band out of LA. Uh, so a lot of cool stuff. And then plus next week I'm gonna have some cool stuff here too. You guys gotta tune in. Thank you for being a part of the Carney Show. Thank you, Liz, for being a part of the show. I greatly appreciate it. We're gonna have a part two, I know. Uh, or part, oh, we'll technically be a part. Well, technically be a part three uh, because we've done yep. it once with yours. Now it's with mine. We'll probably then we're gonna go. I, I think we're just the next like every couple, every month or every couple of months, we're gonna go back and forth, which will be a lot of fun. And, I would love uh, that. I'm down. Really? Yeah. I mean, we'll make it work. And like, we'll, next time will be me going. All right, cool. I gotta get up for show. I gotta get on my show. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> Jeff. You are so lovely. Anytime, like you ask, I am there. One hundred percent. Absolutely awesome. So, uh, so everybody, be be calm, be cool, be groovy, and as always, keep drinking. And let me click on the thing. There we go. Cheers, everybody. Thank you.